What we keep getting told time and again is that like nobody has been immune to it. Everybody feels it. I felt it. Everybody at home, I'm sure, has. I'm sure you have as well. In the shopping basket, where have you noticed it? You know, look, everybody is feeling um, the impact of inflation. Uh, the cost of living is rising. Um, and everyone's household budget is different and they feel it in different ways. You know, for me, it's the, it's the utility bills. Like, that's the thing that hits me when I see it coming out of my bank account. It's obviously much more than much more than it used to be. For families, of course, it's different again. You know, it's uh, some of the rising costs of putting kids through school. Um, for people who commute long distances, it's the cost of petrol and diesel. You know, so it, it affects everyone in different ways. Um, what there can be no dispute about is that it is affecting everyone. Um, everyone is feeling the squeeze. Uh, and of course, uh, people on low incomes uh, are feeling it most acutely um, because uh, some of those families are making some very difficult decisions about what to spend money on at all. Uh, and that's why government has to respond. Um, this is almost entirely driven by international factors, as I think mm. most people will accept. And I don't need to go into the details as to why that's the case around how the price of energy is set and monetary policy and so on. Um, but government can do a lot to help. Uh, so in January, you know, we did minimum wage increase, welfare increases, pension increase, income tax cuts, which were opposed by a lot in the opposition benches. Uh, since then, we've um, reduced the VAT on electricity to gas to the lowest possible. We've had the 200 taken out off the electricity bills. We've had the school transport costs being reduced. Um, we've taken 20 to 15 cents off petrol or diesel, gone as low as we can on diesel, in fact, under European law. Um, there'll be a further response uh, uh, on budget day, which is now only about two months away, and people will see that uh, in their pockets and in their bills within weeks of the budget being announced, and then there'll be a further set of actions that then kick in in January who, next year. Who who in the country will feel it most in their pockets? Because a lot of people yeah. would have welcomed the cut in VAT and the, mm. the 200 quid extra I I into their pocket, but those were, I suppose, universal benefits. Everybody... Mm -hmm felt them and what everybody or rather what every economist worth their salt in the ESRI, Irish Fiscal Advisory Council are saying is that what the government need to do in a situation like this is to be honest with people that there's going to be a winter of discontent, it is going to be tough and to a degree you've got to just grit your teeth and bear with it. It is the people who need help the most who should be targeted. Yeah, well, you see, you can have targeted measures and you can have universal measures. Uh, so universal measures that help everyone, like the 200 euros taken off every household's electricity bill. And you can have target measures like we did on the same day, which was to pay an additional fuel allowance payment to those who are uh, most in need. And why not increase that fuel allowance payment and not give you 200 quid back in your pocket and me 200 quid back in my pocket? Like, I, I welcome yeah. the 200 okay. quid. If I'm being entirely honest, did I need it? No, you didn't. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's not, not about you and me. Um, turn it the other way around. What if we just increased the fuel allowance? Uh, if we just increased the fuel allowance, that would only benefit a very small number of people in the country. You know, there are people on social welfare who don't qualify for, for the fuel allowance. There are lots of pensioners, maybe your parents, maybe my parents, that don't qualify for the fuel allowance. And often when people talk about targeted measures, there are often people don't necessarily understand how the social welfare system, the tax system works. Targeted measures really can only benefit people who are in receipt of social welfare and then not even all of them. If you want to do anything for working people, working families, middling of families, lots of them are really feeling the squeeze, then you can't just do targeted measures. You need to do something else. Um, and what you can do is come up with a really complicated new means, means test. Um, or you can just accept the fact that, yes, you are going to help everyone. Mm. And maybe some people... You see, middle-income um, families who are them. feeling the squeeze, I understand why you want to uh, 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 offer them support. They're possibly voting for Fine Gael. But again, those economists at the Irish Fiscal mm. Advisory Council, the ESRI, say, no, it, it, it'd be great if you could benefit them, but yeah. don't. Target... No, well, 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 look, first of all, I'm the leader of Fine Gael and nobody, Fine Gael's never going to apologise for saying that we want work to pay more, that we're going to stand up for working families and middle income people. Whether they vote for us or not, that's part of our raison d'etre. You know, we understand that for a society to work well, you have to reward work, you have to promote enterprise. Um, you know, you have to say to people who are middle incomes that um, we don't just think you're, you're on your own, you're grand. <laughs> we appreciate yeah, the government. Your duty is not owed to Fine Gael. your duty is owed to the state, you're the tonish to. Yeah, but, but the leader it's, of yeah, it's honest and, and first, surely. And, and I think the right approach, therefore, is targeted measures that help those most in need most and universal measures that help everyone. But you mentioned ESRI, you mentioned IFAC. Let me mention another state body, uh, the Central Statistics Office. Look at the research that they published in June. Uh, what they say is that those on the lowest incomes have had a 7.6% loss of income in real terms because of rising costs. Do you know what figure they came up with for middle income? No. 67 
So, you know, you'd have the impression when it comes to some, some of the way this issue is discussed about, you'd swear that those in the lowest incomes are being hit twice as hard or three times as hard or 50% harder or 20% harder. It's not even that. 6.7 for middle income families, 7.6 for the lowest. And that's why we believe that even on an objective statistical basis, uh, it's right that middle income families should get help too. Yeah, but a 7% hit for someone on a lower income is disproportionately going to impact them, isn't it? Because of, of, uh, of the mm. reduced disposable income they have compared to the middle income family. Well, that depends. You know, it's very often the middle income family, for example, that doesn't qualify for a medical card. Um, that has to pay a lot in childcare because... Um, You're not suggesting the middle-income family is worse off than the poorer family now. No, I'm not suggesting that, but I'm, what, what I don't accept is this thesis, which is the, only the poorest families in society are suffering and therefore they're only the ones that should get help. Uh, I think everyone's feeling the squeeze. I think people on middle incomes uh, are feeling the squeeze too. And I think the right approach is the approach that the government has adopted so far, which is universal measures that benefit everyone, working people, middle income people, and additional targeted measures that help those who need the most, the most. And that's the right approach in my view.